Friends, today we're going to talk about the best perks to look for on your weapons, armor, and jewelry, and where you can also acquire a few decent pieces of gear. And then we're going to go over, if you get something that's pretty good but not perfect, how you can turn it into the perfect item via the gypsum kiln. If you're interested in a particular section, whether it's the armor, the weapons, the jewelry, or anything else that we cover in this video, you can scrub along in the, uh, like the timestamps down below. One thing that I do want to acknowledge before we go any further in this video is there is, you know, it's not going to be a one size fits all uh, some perks are going to be better for certain scenarios than others and we are going to be mainly focused on pve rather than pvp because they did remove resilience you, you know you don't need that that set perk to do pvp anymore and they also removed the corrupted ward angry earth ward lost ward this gear will work across multiple different pieces of content but it will be more focused on the pve aspect of new world but as i said we do have a lot of people asking like what should i put in this third perk down here baggins on my featherweight what should i be putting as my final perk on my you know artifact uh, flail my artifact void gauntlet so we're going to be covering which perks are good and uh, as I say, particularly for the weapons section where you can go out and farm some of them. So let's kick things off with armor. Perks that I recommend you always have on your armor are health. I think health is universally good. I've tried to get it on as many pieces of gear as I can here. We got the health, we got the health. Um, adding these all up, it just gives you a nice big fat health pool here. And the more health you have, the less likely you are to die. And not dying is good in my opinion. So health is the number one perk. I think this is as close to mandatory as it gets when it comes to perks on your armor. And like I say, it is good in both PvE and PvP. The next most important perk and a perk that you always want to have, and it is a specific amount, you want to have refreshing. If you have refreshing on four different pieces of gear, and it can be your jewelry as well, this will give you up to 16% cooldown reduction because we have 4, 8, 12, 16. So the refreshing perk, also a pretty solid one and one you want to aim for as well but you want to stop at the four stacks. After that, you have a choice between Enchanted Ward or Elemental Aversion. I think both of these perks are pretty good. Elemental Aversion, even though it looks very specific, it says uh, you receive less damage from ranged elemental attacks. So you'd think like, oh, when I'm getting attacked with a Fire Staff, why is that so good, Baggins? It does actually work on a number of different abilities in the game as well. So although, again, you would think it's just ranged attacks, it also works on abilities. It works on damage conversion gems for PvP. So if, uh, you know, muskets often use ruby gems, um, to convert damage to fire it would reduce that damage and it does work on various aspects of mutated expeditions as well because mutated expeditions use elemental damage uh, as their modifiers so hellfire for um, tempest up here and then we've got icebound which is ice damage for starstone so elemental aversion works particularly good for mutated dungeons and it does have a few applications as well uh, whereas physical aversion which is like the opposite side that is actually just ranged attack so that only really works on like a bow or a musket or something so elemental version pretty solid but also enchanted ward a good one here as well people ask me with enchanted ward is this just a pvp thing because do only players do light and heavy attacks there's the light there's the heavy um no ai also do light and heavy attacks as well so if you're fighting against just some random mobs they will hit you with light and heavy attacks along with abilities also Another important perk that can slot in in place of Enchanted Ward or Elemental Aversion is Grit Ward. Now, this is mainly just for tanks or players playing with 300 constitution because your basic melee attacks gain grit. So um, if you're running a melee weapon and you have 300 constitution, I highly recommend going for the Grit Ward. Uh, grit Ward just basically makes you take less damage while you have grit, which is basically that's when you're glowing white and you're uninterruptible. So you can't really be CC'd um, and having this on every piece of armor is pretty solid. So Grit Ward definitely want to go for also. And then the final sort of must have perk that I would recommend is your weapon perks. So um, these are perks that modify your abilities. For example, Mending Protection is a very good one for me as a healer. It increases my outgoing healing if I heal somebody below 50%. Fortifying perf rate if you're playing with a spear, enfeebling poison shot. Basically, just take a look at whatever abilities you're rocking on your weapons, and you generally want to be taking the perks that modify them. So, Leeching Cyclone, Fortifying Perf Rate, Enfeebling Skewer, Keen Vault Kick, whatever abilities you guys are running for, it's usually a good idea to take the abilities that modify and make these uh, stronger when you get the perk on your armor. So, that's another like sort of must have perk as well. After this, things get a bit situational. Freedom is generally more of a PvP thing. There's harnessing perks. Can be good if you're playing with a particular build. So ice harnessing or fire harnessing for fire staffs or ice gauntlets, probably something that you should go for. These conditioning perks are a bit situational, but can be okay as well. But in general, I would say that health, enchanted ward, or grit ward, 
elemental aversion, weapon perks, and refreshing will want to make up the bulk of perks on your gear. Shirking energy can be something you look for on your legs if you're in a light equip load, and maybe something like shirking fortification could be good in medium and heavy as well. Um, any other perks that we didn't cover, like vigor and invigorated, they're not necessarily bad, but this is, you know, for the purposes of keeping this video concise, I'm going to recommend health, the uh, Enchanted Ward, Grit Ward, Refreshing, obviously, Weapon Perks that you care about, and then maybe if it applies to you, also going for some of this Harnessing Perks if you're playing some sort of Mage build. Moving over to Jewelry and Must Have Perks on the Jewelry. When it comes to the Amulet, I think Health is a Must Have Perk. This is just really, really good. Just having extra Health, again, benefits everybody. When it comes to the Ring, Hearty is a perk that you always want to see there as well. It gives you access to an extra dodge roll without my Hearty Ring. If I dodge and dodge, I'm out of stamina, I'm exhausted, and I have to wait quite a while until I can dodge again. Um, but if we put the hearty ring on, we can now dodge one, two, three times, which, you know, can be sometimes the difference between life and death. If you if you really need to get out of there, hearty is, is super good for everybody. It benefits even tanks who don't spend a lot of time dodging because it gives you extra block sort of stamina. And then a must-have perk on the earring is refreshing toast. After this, everything is kind of up to you. I believe stamina recovery is a great perk to go for. These protection perks, if you know you're going into a particular sort of uh, environment, so if I was going to jump into, let's say, difficulty three of uh, Tempest Heart, there's going to be a tremendous amount of fire damage, so I'd probably want to look to take an amulet that gives me uh, flame protection. If I was going to jump into a nature mutation, having nature protection can be pretty good. Um, obviously, these are a bit more situational. Uh, but those protection perks definitely don't underestimate how powerful those can be. Another perk to keep your eye out for on amulets is this uh, recovery perk as well. Refreshing recovery. When your health drops below 50%, all ability cooldowns are reset. That's pretty powerful. 90 second cooldown um, versus the 30 second cooldown on stamina, which is also very powerful as well, giving you back your full stamina. I think both of these are pretty awesome choices. Uh, the empowered, the fortified, the rest of the uh, amulet perks that we didn't talk about, I think they're all pretty good. Um, you know, the, the shirking dark cleanse and stuff, but I definitely would like to see health on my amulet. Um, probably one of the recovery perks and then generally the protection perk on what I'm going in for. That's that's the amulet perks that I'm looking for. A tank maybe wants to opt to go for that divine option for the extra incoming healing though. And when it comes to earring perks, here's all the earring perks that we can uh, allegedly have. We have refreshing toast, healthy toast. I do very much like these perks as we covered. Refreshing toast, being able to use your potions more often. Pretty damn awesome. Healthy toast, I do really rate this perk quite highly. I think it's more of a healer thing for me. Um, but when you drink a mana potion, you get a percentage of your max health. I'm drinking lots of mana potions, so this is good. Even if you don't have a mana pool, you can still just drink a mana potion and get a heal, so that's pretty solid. Um, DPS maybe wants to look for Empowering Toast. Purifying Toast can also be a nice option, or even the Fortifying Toast. All of the Toast perks, I think, are fairly solid, other than Duplicating Toast. This is a stinky perk. Um, ignore this one. I, I just think it's it's very niche and doesn't really work too often. So, yeah, typically you want to be looking for that sort of um, Refreshing Toast and Healthy Toast. I think Regenerating, which we don't actually see in this list, is another good perk. Nimble, don't really rate that one too highly. Desp Despised can be good for tanks, though. Um, Beloved is good on the opposite side. But as I say, the, the perk sort of pool for effective earrings is pretty limited. Um, refreshing Toast and Regenerating. Refreshing Toast, Healthy Toast. And then maybe looking for that sort of Despised or Beloved to increase your threat as a tank or reduce your um, threat as a healer. Probably good perks to go for as well. Don't really rate the healing heart too highly, but if you guys enjoy that one, uh, go for it. But as I say, a quick recap on the earrings. It's it's refreshing toast, and then you can kind of go with what works after that. And then lastly, moving over to the ring perks. Um, we've already covered it, but hearty is a great one to have. Other perks that you can sort of uh, push in there, depending on what you're playing. Healing Breeze, great for healers. Sacred, also excellent for healers. Keen is kind of good all around um, for both tanks, healers, and even DPS. Do I just have a bit of extra crit? I think this is also like a universally good perk. And then it gets a bit more niche after that, depending on what sort of weapons you're playing with. So great swords could benefit from slash damage quite highly. Fire staffs could obviously benefit from fire damage. So you can slot these in. The perks that I generally don't, uh, you know, like get too excited about are enfeebling. Infected is a bit more niche, can work in some situations, but not great. Crippling, not good in PvE. Burning and bloodletting. I just don't really rate this sort of section up here. But if you want to go for those, that's your own prerogative. Leeching can also be a pretty solid perk as well. Okay, so that covers armor, jewelry, um, now we're going to move on to weapons, and this is where things get a bit more nuanced and a bit harder to sort of universally say, just get this, you know? Like, when we talk about health is always good on your armor, health is always good on your amulet, but there's not really a perk that is always good on your weapons, you know? If you're playing for 
a life staff, for example, Blessed or Savior is really good. Um, but Keen, not really that great. You don't really care too much about crit chance as a healer because there's no critical heals. The same could be said of something like Refreshing Move. This is a great perk to have on a one-handed sword and a flail because you, you like to sort of rotate you through your cooldowns as a tank or a healer pretty often. But for something like a bow, uh, Refreshing Move actually not that great. So what we're going to do here, bearing in mind that artifacts do exist and generally the artifact equivalents of, of each weapon are going to be better. And by the way, if you're curious about artifacts, we'll link a video up in the top right description down below and at the end instead we're going to hop over to new world database and we're going to talk about these sort of different weapons that amazon have added in uh, they have these categories so we have the tangle vine version of every weapon we have the soul shroud version of every weapon we have the deep river we have the syncretic so you guys might have heard about these but we're going to talk about the particular perks on them why they're good and we're also going to cover how you can turn an item like this, which doesn't look too impressive, 630 gear score, two fairly decent perks for the bow, how you can bump it up to 700 gear score and make it the best possible weapon in the game. So this hopefully is going to pretty be a pretty exciting section. Uh, we'll cover the weapons, and then after we cover all the weapons, we'll talk about where you can farm each type. So we're here on New World Database. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this website before, incredibly good website for New World information. Um, I'll link to it in the description down below if you're interested. But what I wanted to talk about is these different versions. We covered it in my inventory there, but you have the wood grain version of every sort of weapon in the game. You have the Tei version of every weapon. You have the life ring version and some are better than others. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through my top picks for each weapon and then sort of later on in the video, I'll cover how you can upgrade them because a lot of the time you'll get these items, they'll only be like 630 gear score, 650, but you can upgrade them all the way to 700 and you can sort of slot a third perk of your dreams onto these items. And in a lot of cases, this will make a best in slot item. However, most of the time, they're not going to be better than their artifact equivalents. So generally, like a greatsword, for example, artifact greatsword, hands down, is just one of the best. The artifact rapier, hands down, again, just one of the best. But Considering you can only have one artifact weapon, if you're playing with the artifact spear, for example, then you'll need a non-artifact version of the greatsword. And that's what we're going to cover here. And then later on in the video, um, we'll cover quickly where you can farm them, like the easiest mobs to farm them, and also how you can upgrade said items. So kicking things off, my weapons of choice for the one-handed sword, and this is bearing in mind that I typically think one-handed sword is a tank weapon, and usually a weapon ability that you always want to have as a tank is refreshing move, because every time you hit an enemy, you can lower your cooldowns, and then you can taunt more often and uh, keep your defenses up. So refreshing move is baked in, it's always on this weapon. Trenchant rend, which isn't that great, is always there. And then the third perk that you'd be looking for is probably going to be something like enchanted or vicious or keen or life stealing something that's going to help you take a stay alive or maybe even hated um, we can take a look you can get all of these perks in here as well if you're not a big fan of that trenchant rend uh sort of perk there and i'm not too much of a big fan either there is life ring now this one doesn't have refreshing move guaranteed but obviously um, it does appear if you get this uh, sword at 675 gear score or higher, um, then there's a 2.74% chance that it would be there. But the other perks that are present on it, Enchanted and Vicious, are pretty solid as well. But you definitely want to be putting Refreshing Move as the third perk on this bad boy for uh, for tanking. Moving over to the Rapier. Now, obviously, we covered the Artifact Rapier is kind of just like hands down better than anything else we can find. But if you're using an Artifact Greatsword and Rapier is your secondary, you can't have an Artifact Rapier. This would be the one that I would go for out of uh, or the Life Ring Keratin, you know, that this is the one. Uh, it has Rogue and Keenly Jagged, and then third perk that I would put on here would probably be Omnidirectional Evade. I think Omnidirectional Evade for the extra damage is pretty solid. So that has a, is it even here? Yeah, that is a 4.72% chance of uh, being active, but you can obviously put that on there um, through the Gypsum Kiln, which we'll cover later on. When it comes to Flails, I, again, consider this to be more of a tank weapon, and a must-have perk for tanks is the Refreshing Move um, the mortal power, maybe not too great here, but you know, 15% extra damage for 20 seconds when you kill something, not too bad. And then the third perk that you'd be slapping on this bad boy would probably be something like Vicious, Keen, or Enchanted. I think those would also be pretty uh, excellent options for the, the Tei Flail. On the Spear, this was hands down the best pick for me. Um, this one comes with Vicious and Keenly Jagged. Um, if you get it at 675 gear score or higher and you roll Enfeebling Skewer, congratulations, that's best in slot. But again, we do have the option to sort of modify and make that our own 
for great axes we're back at the tae section of things tae tae i might have been saying this wrong the whole time refreshing move and enchanted uh, great axe is generally a very ability centric weapon so being able to activate your abilities more often with refreshing move is great the third perk that you want to slap on this bad boy is uh enfeebling maelstrom this has some great utility reducing all the enemy's damage that it hits uh by by 27 for eight seconds pretty solid perk there for warhammers the best option that i could see was the tangle vine warhammer this has keen and trench and strikes it is pretty often that you can get a fully charged heavy off with the warhammer and they do hit really hard the third perk that i would slap on here or hope to see come out would be sundering clear out or sundering shockwave i think that both of these have a lot of value for the amount of rend that you add uh, Sunder and clear out a little bit stronger at 25% versus the 15%. For great swords, it is a bit of a tough one. Again, the artifact great sword just beats this 1 million percent hands down, but trench and strikes is a must have perk on the great sword. And then the only other option we had was shirking abyss. So trench and strikes, shirking abyss. And then I think the third perk that I'd be looking for here would be like refreshing move or keenly jagged. I think those are also, also like pretty excellent options for the great sword. For bows, the syncretic bow seems to be hand down the most popular choice. Uh, fellow streamer new world content creator arrow lee is a big fan of the syncretic bow it's got keenly jagged and enchanted which are great perks for the bow and then the third perk usually what you're going to be going for is attunement which just it doesn't actually appear in the list so you will have to do this one through the gypsum kiln but the attunement perks are all pretty awesome in particular arboreal attunement for a little bit of extra nature damage um, good for high single target dps it's the same for the musket as well keenly jagged and there's that arboreal attunement that we just talked about with the bow third perk that i would go for on the musket would probably be vicious or empowering shooter stance but i will warn you i'm not much of a musket player so uh, i'm just going with what i think would be good vicious third perk if you upgraded this so that the kiln would probably be an excellent choice for the blunderbuss keenly empowered and enchanted seems to be the best perks that i could find out of the sort of deep river life ring te sort of items third perk that you would put down here depends what sort of playstyle you would want to go for net shot is pretty good for pvp and probably something you want to look at otherwise maybe just attunement for a little bit of extra dps whenever you hit that left mouse button the best and freely farmable fire staff you can find out there is the corrupt progenitor fire staff this has keen keenly jagged and then the third perk you'd be looking for vicious which comes out a lot of the time or you could slap on a fireball, accelerating flamethrower, or even attunement, depending on what sort of playstyle you're going with. For life staffs, it's a hands down no brainer for me. It is the corrupt progenitor life staff. This has blessed and refreshing move guaranteed. These are the two absolute best in slot perks that you want to have in your life staff. And then the third perk, you'd be looking to take a weapon ability. So mending protection or refreshing divine embrace or fortifying sacred ground, depending on which one's your favorite heal. That's what I would choose to put on this perk in the Gypsum Kiln. For Ice Gauntlets, there wasn't really a clear-cut winner in my opinion, so I went with the Syncretic Ice Gauntlet. This has Keenly Jagged and Vicious. Third perk that I put on this would probably be Unending Thor or the um, Pylon Burst perk. For the Void Gauntlet, I really like to have Refreshing Move on my Void Gauntlet, and although the Artifact Void Gauntlet does exist, if you're pairing it with something else that is an Artifact, then this is a pretty good option. Refreshing Move Enchanted. Third perk could be Putrefying Scream. It could be Keen, which is good as well for lowering Void gone the cooldowns uh, just probably not blessed when it comes to tower shields i opted to go for the wood grain tower shield it has refreshing and sturdy the third perk that you want to have here is sturdy energy or a fortifying shield rush is a pretty excellent option as well provided obviously you're playing with a sword and shield anyway and then from the round shield option uh, if you are playing with a sword and shield and you've been a bit more aggressive you're in like a light equip load rather than playing tank i think keen keenly empowered and then the third perk of vicious would also be like pretty excellent here on the soul shroud round shield right now as promised we're gonna briefly go over where you can farm each one of those categories of items so if you're interested in any of the life ring items which in this particular guide the life ring item that we recommended was the spear and uh, a one-handed sword life ring items can be farmed with entropy malevolence and abiogenesis i think i'm saying that last one right um, all of these can be found in the clip that we're showing here on the on the screen so you can get them in eden grove there's actually a little sort of circle arena area where they spawn and you can get all of the different life ring items just by sitting here um, on my server there was like a raid sitting there pretty much 24 7 just farming these items so a pretty good area to go 
And uh, like I said, you can find all of the life ring items here. The name of the point of interest, just if you're curious, is Tor to Riven. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Tor to Riven, which you can find sort of uh, kind of south of this fast travel. Yeah, Elysian Shrine, just going south of there. Um, that's where you're going to find the little party going on. If you're interested in any of the Taiyi items like the Great Axe or the Void Gauntlet, one of the best spots that I found to farm those items was up in the north of Ebon Scale. So there was sort of a little loop that you could do um, over an Ebon Scale. It's in, what is the name of the area? I'm going to have to look it up live here while the footage plays. It's called Sky Song Crypt. So in Sky Song Crypt, there are a variety of different enemies. Um, Ivan, the Terrible, Farley, and I think it was Morticia, Morticus, something like that. Uh, he's got a big, you know, uh, coffin on his back. Those were the enemies that all have the chance to drop the Tei items. So again, if you're interested in any of those, that's where you want to go. Sky Sun Crypt, north of Evanscale. For keratin items, such as the Rapier, which we showcased, the best place you can go to is Heliopolis. In fact, it's really the only place you can go to. This is a bit of a difficult one to farm because all of the enemies are su like super high level elites with lots and lots of health. I did manage to take down a couple of cats for the purpose of making footage for this video but it was quite a difficult fight and I did have to uh, sort of utilize just standing in sacred ground a lot but if you're interested in getting some keratin items you want to keep an eye out in recruitment chat for anybody saying plus helio or x helio depending on which server you if you type uh, x helio plus helio into recruitment chat hopefully you can find a group that is going to heliopolis and then you'll be able to farm out some of these keratin items including the keratin rapier for deep river items such as the blunderbuss which you covered and also this bow here the best spot to go to is in Reekwater. Um, there is the sirens brute who has a really fast respawn timer forever whatever reason he comes back really quickly there's typically a lot of people farming him because he has a couple of other nice drops that people want to go for so the sirens brute area is located in requater it's in the sirens sort of stand if you type plus siren in or x siren into recruitment chat you'll be able to find people to go in there as well it is an elite area and he's sort of chilling uh, behind a big gate that you have to go you know he he blows it up so if you're trying to get through the gate you might have to wait for it blow up it's a little bit of a tricky run to get there but uh, the deep river items are pretty good as well for tangle vine items such as the warhammer one of the best spots to go to is vanash um, vanash is located in the cave he's the guy that drops odo which is the artifact flare you can find Vanash down at the bottom of the cave. However, if you can't get there for whatever reason or you want to do it solo, I recommend going to Elifry Prigo. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Elifry Prigo is located in Elysian Wilds. Um, a bunch of enemies around here, like there's the little plants. There is Adiana's Chosen Beast at the back. Um, you can get Tangle Vine items from these enemies. For syncretic items, including the syncretic bow and syncretic musket, your best bet is to take on a few enemies uh, located in the sort of this area on Brimstone Sands. So we have a little bit of footage here. I'll also show it live in the video. So you have this kind of area with Atom's Way and Forge of Patar. So there's a bunch of different enemies around here that can drop them. Rafik of Bishara. And then I think it's Aphoas. <laughs> don't know how I say it. It's a big brute guy. He can also drop some syncretic items as well. So you want to be sort of farming this uh, area outside of Heliopolis to get syncretic items from the named enemies. When it comes to corrupt progenitor items, such as the life staff, your best bet really is to get yourself into a Merc God run. So it's very common on uh, my server, at least here on Barry, that people are typing plus portal in the chat very often. Um, or plus Merc. So getting yourself up into Merc God, there are various enemies in Merc God that drop the corrupted progenitor items such as the life staff. However, one of the option, if you're, you just hate the idea of going near other people, um, there is thankfully a solo way to farm it as well. And it is at Spryla Tower. So in Spryla Tower, you can find a Angry Earth called Fey and Faye also can drop some of the corrupt progenitor items as well. When it comes to wood grain items, the best place to farm these is good old Banes. Banes is super easy to kill. You can do it solo, but when I went to him, there was a bunch of people farming him like just constantly. He seems to respawn really quickly as well. So a good way to get a bunch of these wood grain items, including the tower shield, which can be quite good for tanks. So just going to this spot on the map, which is located in Eden Grove. It's um, kind of outside where old malevolence used to be. So the spot is called Spire Perilous. You 
can find wood gray down as strong beans just outside the front here and again he's a very easy solo farm but usually you're going to find groups sort of killing him as well lastly for soul shroud items such as the round shield which we covered you want to be killing a uh, big priest enemies in merc guards so one of the best spots to go to is right up at the top of merc guard over here you have arch magister vocus there's people farming this guy 24 7 on my server because he also has like a mount attachment and a bunch of other items as well but any of the big sort of priest um corrupted priest enemies in merc guard can give you the soul shroud items as well now lastly as promised we're going to talk about how you can take these items and bump them up to 700 gear score and choose your third perk of your choice um because again you might be wondering well this isn't best in slot baggins it's, it's a really low gear score um if you're wondering which is the third perk you want to put on we did cover that in each individual section with each weapon so if you're looking for perk recommendations of which third perk to go for check uh check out you know the previous bit of the video but all you got to do friends is have the item in your bag so have it in your bag you could maybe have it in the storage shed as well but we're going to say have it in the bag uh, make sure it's not equipped to your character if it's equipped to your character it won't show up as an option if it's in a gear set it also won't show up as an option so take it out of the gear sets take it off your character and then go to the gypsum kiln with the item in your bag and what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the menu here and by the way for those of you not familiar gypsum kilns are located in all of the end game towns so eden grove brimstone sands Evanscale Reach, um, even Great Cleave, Shattered Mountain. The only one to be wary of is the Gypsum Kiln in, um, what is this place called? Last Light. It's actually bugged. It doesn't, it's there, but it's not there. So watch out for that one. But all the other Gypsum Kilns should be working. And again, we want to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And here's all of the named items that I currently have in my inventory. There's Deep River Bow. And what we can do is click over here click to add the perk that we want we're going to add enchanted here for example and then when we hit craft provided we have the materials we will make a 700 gear score bow with frost achievement keenly empowered and enchanted the only reason it doesn't show as legendary here is because it doesn't know like it's, it's not able to predict what craft mod you want to put on it so it just shows a 700 gear score version but it will have that third perk there as well and it's really that simple one other thing obviously that you guys might have the question is well how do i get these materials so Chromatic Seals, you buy these from your faction vendor. So if you are Covenant, it's obviously your Covenant faction vendor. If you are Marauder, the Marauder faction vendor syndicate, you, you guys get the idea. They're located on the bottom tier of the faction vendor. So you will have to max out your faction rep and you can only buy one of these a day. So I'll give you guys a quick little example here. We go to rewards and then we go down to the bottom tier for me all the way down and there is the chromatic seal you can buy one of these um the the ability to buy them resets at 5 a.m server time every day so uh, it costs 20,000 marks of fortune 5,000 gold there's no other way to get these and i do recommend that you put gold aside and faction tokens in order to buy them you can also buy gypsum uh, orbs from the faction vendor as well um gypsum orbs are generally pretty easy to come by if like people ask me what is the purpose of gypsum orbs this is probably one of the biggest purposes when it comes to dark matter your best bet for getting dark matter is doing chest runs and then salvaging items you don't want you can also go and do mutated expeditions. Every mutated expedition you do will give you a chest at the end that you can pop open to get some dark matter as well. But I think in order to keep this video from going too long, we will make a dedicated video on how to get dark matter. And then lastly, you're going to need a weapon matrix. Now, weapon matrix, you can craft these or you can buy them off the trading post. If you search for weapon matrix in the trading post, you can buy them. They're also available through your trade skills as well. So we have weaponsmithing if we go all the way down to the bottom. There's the weapon matrix, so we can make this at the forge. And it's also available through engineering as well. So if we go all the way down to the bottom. There's the weapon matrix, and we can make it at the workshop. To my understanding, the workshop version of the weapon matrix with engineering is actually a bit cheaper to make. So bear that in mind as well. Right, this video has gone quite long. Um, I'm sure there's still more questions that you guys have. And you might be asking, well, what about this situation? What about that situation? Again, there's a lot of nuance in New World. There is really no true one size fits all. You might be running a very unique build with a, with you know all your points in focus using heavy armor, warhammer musket, in which case, you know, there's gonna be some different perks good for you. But what I wanted to talk about here was generalizations and uh, just give some good examples of some weapons that you can farm uh, if you're not able to get any artifacts. And, uh, you know, the, a lot of these um, pieces of gear that we talked about, there is also an armor equivalent as well. So whilst there is the sort of deep river bow that we took a look at, there's also the deep river ring as well. So there is, again, quite a bit of an advantage to going farming the mobs that we talked about. Right, we're going to end the video here. If you guys got any further questions, leave them in the comments down below or come into the stream. I am streaming almost every day over on Twitch. You can find the link in the description down below, twitch.tv forward slash baggins tv. 
Hopefully you guys have found this video useful. Um, I will catch you guys all in the next one.